I'm Joshua Delisle, designer maker. Today we're reviewing the longer 20 watt laser module. So this is an $800 machine, but you guys have a chance of winning this for just over $2. 100% of those proceeds are going to the DEC, which is a disaster and emergency committee to help with the relief that's happened in Turkey recently. I get given these machines to review, but I thought why not use this opportunity to do some good. To claim your raffle ticket, just click in the description below. Right, let's begin the review. Let's have a look at the module straight out the box. Wow, she's big and heavy. More cables and a fixing plate and a much bigger 24 volt, five amp hour power supply. And in this box, I believe it's an air assist. That's interesting, very similar to one we've had previously. The my set didn't include any tools or cable ties for this, and there wasn't any instruction manual either. However, on Longer's YouTube channel, they have all the instructions that you need. Lovely choice of music. So I've finally got it assembled. Let's go through my first impressions and any negatives so far. Although the video instructions were clear and easy to follow, what I had to do is completely take apart the gantry here, both the headstock and the x-axis in order to fit this new laser on. It wasn't simple to put together and a little bit fiddly. And to adjust the height of a laser, they again give you this block of plastic that you slide underneath. And then the adjustment is these two bolts here. That lowers down and then you lock them both into place and then remove the plastic after. Now personally, I don't like that system at all. I find it very inconvenient. For a start, when you loose these, the laser can suddenly drop. Not only that, it has a tendency not to align so well. It'd be far better if we had a screw adjustment or even just a singular bolt so that we don't have to hold two at the same time. I also don't like having a block like this as a height gauge because that can easily get lost. It'd be much better to have something that could just flip down from the head itself. Now, one of the biggest negatives to having a bulky 20 watt module is that it's far bigger. And so the cutting capacity is now reduced by 30 millimeters either way. And if we now turn it on, the fan is registering 73 decibels, which is a lot louder than the other lasers. Now for the air assist. The rated pressure is 10 kPa with a rated flow of 20 liters per minute. Mine came with a loose thread and I repaired it using some Loctite 55. This pump doesn't have a filter and the air inlet is located on the bottom. So if you decide to get this model of pump, then you might want to decide to build your own filter attachment. The pump though is relatively quiet, it's 62 decibels. So these lasers are getting incredibly powerful and it's absolutely no joke that if you get a slight glare from that laser, you could ruin your eyes forever. Now I may look silly, but I do use my welding helmet when messing around with these. I recommend for you to get the correct safety glasses that are rated for the same model of laser that you'll be getting. The wavelength for this one is 450 to 460. So if you go online, you'll be able to find the correct lens for you. Also, if you don't have extraction, then you need to have a well-ventilated workspace. It's not the wood smoke that's dangerous, but the glues and the resins that are within the process wood, such as plywood or MDF, they contain toxins that are aren't good for you. Now the larger laser module has a very limited head height, so I'm unable to use the honeycomb sheet uh, for propping the work on, unless I heighten the machine itself by putting blocks underneath. Because I have a steel work table, it's not an issue for me, and I'm just gonna prop the material up on some washers. Now let's turn the machine on. And on Lightburn, I've created a cut test file. Start the test. Let's look at the results. So this is nine millimeter hardwood ply. We're getting a 100% cut through rate at 80% power at 200 millimeters per minute. And the cutouts don't look overly charred. The machine was set to 10 millimeters and the cutouts come to 9.6 and 9.44. So we can use the difference to work out the kerf width. Now you'll notice that I didn't go to 100% power and there's a very good reason for that. So as you can see behind me, we've been testing lots of 10 watt lasers in this workshop and we've produced excellent cuts using 100% power. However, what I found over time is that that power is decreasing the more and more I use these lasers. So I don't think manufacturers are telling you enough is that if you use 100% power all the time, your laser will degrade quite quickly. So what's excellent about these new 20 watt lasers is that we can use them on half the power and still get really good cuts. Therefore, we're not maxing out the laser and they should last a lot longer. So I am going to run this on 100% power for a good length of time and then we'll redo that test and see what it turns out like. But until then, let's try something fun on this thing.
So I don't know about you, but for a single pass, that cut fantastically. I actually set the kerf width to 0.2 of a millimeter and everything obviously was a very tight squeeze. If you're interested in cutting your own boxes, you can find 10 different sizes with three different thicknesses, three, six, and nine millimeter. That's a whole design package in my Etsy shop. There'll be a link in the description. All right, so I've gone ahead and got some three millimeter plywood. And my test shows that we can go to 500 millimeters per minute. So let's test a more complex design. So I actually ran into a little bit of an issue with this. I first of all attempted to back it with this sacrificial board. And that way I could have everything flat and I wouldn't need to put any spaces underneath. As it turns out, having that little bit of a space is really important. Hence why these honeycomb things are such a good idea. So as you can see, I've repeated this pattern twice. That's because this side that I did on the board didn't cut. Whilst all of these cut no problem. Now that's not bad at all. Let's see if I can get this thing assembled. Here we go. Now I don't have any instructions for this either. So I'm just going to wing it like I do all the IKEA furniture. I can tell you, however, this is going to be a very tight fit. Where's my hammer? There we go. That was definitely a resistance fit if ever I've seen one. Now this bit is not going together, it's just far too tight. So this is set with zero kerf width. So I'm gonna have to cut this part again, but with a negative kerf width. So it makes these holes and everything slightly bigger. There we are, that's much better. Well, there we are. Now I would challenge any top carpenter to try and do this within an hour. So before we do the brake test on this thing, let's just try some stainless steel. All right, let's see the results. Wow. Well, I was not expecting that. So all the way to 90% power, we can get 5,000 millimeters per minute. We're getting some funky colors down this way. I've got an idea. So after much experimentation, this is what I've come up with. So you've got some colors, like temper colors coming through. We've got blues, yellows, purples. Now that has opened a huge amount of possibilities in what you can do with one of these lasers. Now what you saw was at 30% power at 1,000 millimeters per minute. I didn't achieve those colors there though. I'd have to do some more experimentation to get the full range of this. This is what 50% power at 1,000 millimeters per minute looks like. But I think both temperature and the steel plays a massive role in how those turn out. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see me get creative with this. So now for the endurance test. I have here roughly 3 inches or 75 millimeters of lime wood, otherwise known as linden wood. Linden is excellent for carving with. Most people use it for making bowls and spoons with. What I want to do is run the laser for an hour straight at 100%. I also want to see how deep it will cut through wood on its standard height. So I'm basically going to do a half on half off circle running at 200 millimeters per minute. This could end up on fire, but that's okay. The whole idea is to test the limit of these things. So we're about 10 minutes in and uh, already we we're catching on fire, which was kind of expected. I'm gonna stop this experiment and start a new one. So we're going to try 5000 RPM at 100% power. This picture is 290 millimeters by 290 millimeters, nearly one foot by one foot. And apparently this is only going to take 25 minutes. Let's try. Right, so six minutes in, I've had to stop it. As you can see, it was gonna be epic, but I've run into some troubles. Despite my best efforts holding this down with these high strength magnets, it's just not staying down. Not only that, it bumped into the magnets a couple of times and set it off course anyway. But what we're getting for 5,000 millimeters per minute is amazing. That's marking this steel five times faster than any of the other machines. What I will say though, is that in future we need to glue this down or even have like a vacuum board of some sort because stainless steel this thing warps like you wouldn't believe. So I've got the nine mil ply test rig out again. We haven't used it for that long on 100% power, but I'm interested to see if it's deteriorated at all. 
Right, so let's have a closer look at these results then. Uh, well, I wasn't expecting that. We seem to have done one better than the previous test. Well, I guess that's a good sign. What I would have liked to have done is run it for about 10 hours on 100%, but I've run out of time for that. So in the short time I've had to test this machine, what do I actually think about it? Well, for a complete machine for $800, you are definitely getting twice the performance. The module itself is $600, or about 500 British pounds. So typically, these diode lasers are apparently lasting between 25 and 50,000 hours. But according to the internet, if we use it at 100% power all the time, we're gonna get about 20% reduction over its lifespan. Now, if that appears to be true, then we can turn out a lot of product for that money. But approaching the $1,000 mark, to me, that's like entry-level business and professionalism. And if you are going to use one of these as a business and you want more adequate protection and extraction. The laser's performance and the build quality is still really good. Just little niggles that I don't like on how it was constructed. But compared to the rest of the laser market, you're definitely getting a lot of bang for your buck. So if you're interested in contributing some good into this world and for a chance to win one of these, then do check out that raffle link in the description. Longer have also given me some great discounts discounts for you if you're interested in purchasing one yourself. And if you like this video, why not watch this one right here? And if not, I encourage you to get out there in the real world and do some good and forge for yourself a life worth living. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.